It started, well, it happened actually at 15. That's why I'm like. What happened at 15? Because I ran away from home. How did it make you feel when he took it from you like that? I feel worthless. I feel like nothing. I feel. To this day, I still feel like nothing. It's like. I'm happy that you chose to tell the story because there's gonna be some 14 to 15 year old girl that's gonna hear this and she's gonna think twice about getting into this strange guy's car. What's up YouTube? I have the best trainer in Atlanta and possibly the world. Hit him up on Instagram, at Katie with the muscle. Now back to the content. All right, so, you know, we had finished the interview, but I wanted to, I guess I had a couple more questions, right? Um, okay, so you were just saying about how your mom and basically how you guys didn't get along. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, even from a young age, like you, you moved in with her at 12, but then by the time you was what? 13, 14, mm -hmm. you was living with your baby daddy? Mm -hmm. And who was he living with? His dad. Okay, so he was living with his dad, okay. Mm -hmm. And so you were saying that basically, you know, um, he was the one that comforted you mm -hmm. through the pain of the relationship that you had with your mom. Pretty much. But then at some point it flipped to him being the one that was abusing you and things like that. Right. Why do you think that is? And the reason why I feel that way because even though my mom was being abusive towards me and I told him how abusive my mom was, it's like he used it all that as flaws and kind of used that against me. So it kind of made me feel like he tried to did that as in a point as in a, well, he, he did propose to me too, like five years ago, but I turned him down and stuff. But it's like, that's not important, but it's like, so let, let me let me ask you this. Let mm -hmm. me ask you this, right? Because you had a baby with him, mm -hmm. and then that baby was taken, right. right? But then you had another baby with him. Mm -hmm. Why'd you have the second baby? Because it was like we we was at a point where we thought we were just gonna, I guess, like work it out and stuff like that. But he couldn't stop being a. He was cheating on me around the time, so it was like. That was pretty much, yeah, that was so, my I mean, fault. So, so you say that was what? That was pretty much my fault on that note, but. As far as what? Your fault as far as what? Well, I don't look at my kids like. No, it's a mistake, but I mean your fault as far as deciding to have a baby with them at that point in the relationship? Pretty much. Okay, I mean, you know, he was cheating on you. Were you cheating on him? Yeah. Okay, who cheated first? Be honest. He did, but I think, well, he did, yeah. <laughs> there was some hesitation there. Okay, so, okay, so when you would cheat on him, how would that occur? You would just meet a guy, would this be somebody you already knew, or what, how would, paint me how that would work? Well, pretty much, it was more like. Because you was living at his dad's house, right? Mm -hmm. So how was you cheating on him? I would go out and I would, just go to my friend's house and I would lie to him and tell him that I'm going to like my sister house or something. Then I go smoke weed with his friend or something. With his friend? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your baby daddy's friend? Mm -hmm. That's what you were cheating on him with? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why was you cheating on him with his friend? Because he was telling me that he was cheating on me with my friends. He would tell you that? Mm -hmm. Or he would admit it once he got caught? Which one? Would he openly tell you or would it be something where he would he'd have to tell me? See, so he would just open, he would just come on and be like, hey, I'm sorry, but I cheated with your friend. No, every time he get mad at me or something like that or something don't go his way or he'd be like, that's to... why I effed your friend. Yeah, pretty much. And so you would then turn around and do his friend? Was it just one friend or was it multiple guys? Well, I would just say, I wouldn't. I'm gonna be honest, like, I would say, I wouldn't say it with his friends, honestly, because I don't, my baby dad friends, but I'll probably smoke weed with him and stuff, like, weed with them and stuff like that, but it would probably be, like, people that he know that he is. Acquaintances, right, yeah, right, I much. get it. <laughs> so, I'm gonna ask, I mean, was this one particular acquaintance or was this multiple? 
it was multiple. Did you have one that was like your favorite or whatever like that? Mm -mm. So would you be cheating just to get back or would you be cheating because you actually wanted to have sex with these guys? Well, it was basically to get back at my baby dad and because I wanted to and because I was stupid, I didn't know better. And you know, and it, it didn't last long. I mean, it was like, it wasn't like, you know, I, I was just out there, out there, but I was out there for a little bit, but not like out there, out there like that. Did your that. baby dad ever find out that you did that? I mean, if he did, I really don't care because I'm in love with this man. Well, no, I was just asking as far as the nature of, of you guys' relationship today. So in other words, if, if, you know, if he had found out and, you know, maybe you guys had an argument about it, that'd be a different relationship than if he had never found out and that's just not even something he was thinking about type deal. That's what I was asking. So, mm -hmm. okay, okay. But the thing, the whole thing is like, well, I'm doing the work on myself. I'm trying to get back in school. I'm trying to, you know, start back like with mental health classes and stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to get my kids back. I'm trying to be a positive person. Yeah, I mean, I saw you, when I rolled by you guys the first time, you was crying, you was in tears. Yeah. What were you crying about? Because me and my husband got into an argument. About what? Just because he think I don't listen to him all the time. Well, do you? <laughs> I do listen. I do listen to him. And it's just like, you got to understand, like, I, I've been, like, scarred from the past. You know what? I, ne I, I never asked. Real quick. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But I've come to ask this on almost every video. And I, I guess it would be appropriate here. Um, so... You know, when you was younger, mm -hmm. um, did anything ever happen to you? Mm. I mean, that's... I've been through a lot. So one thing I know very well, and I ask these questions a certain way for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. That stare off that you did when I asked that question, mm -hmm. you was replaying whatever the situations or situation was in your head. What happened? I guess just dealing with the wrong people. No, tell us what happened. So I've been. You as a kid, yes. like. Mm -hmm. Well. So on on this channel, we've heard almost every iteration of child molestation that you can think of um, so we share we share this information hopefully so that our culture can start to recognize how big of a problem it is and can try to figure out how, to, how we can stop it and do something about it for the next generation of young girls so don't hold it in express what happened well pretty much it's like look at me like oh she's well she probably meant she's so horror this and that no Girl, no, like, no 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 so one of the things that we're experts on of the people that watch all of my videos mm -hmm. they can recognize this stuff without you even saying it mm -hmm. at this point because it's literally been hundreds mm -hmm. okay going into thousands mm -hmm. and so trust me you are not alone the more people that can share these experiences the more as a culture we can come together and say okay let's stop this bullshit I've got two daughters so it's especially important to me mm -hmm. that this type of stuff ceases mm -hmm. so again mm -hmm. I'm trying to be too pushy but 
If you don't mind, share with us what happened. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I was, I was part of my, let's, but it was like, it's like, it's just something I had to deal with, though. Well, but, but do you want the next generation of little girls to just have to deal with it? No. Okay, well, tell us what happened so we can understand how these things happen and what happened and how we can prevent it. We, we can't prevent something if we don't know what happened and how it happened and who did it and everything else. It started, well, it happened actually at 15. That's why I'm like. What happened at 15? Cause I ran away from home. Like I said, trying to be close to my baby dad. Well, my baby dad already know about this story. He already what? didn't know about this story anyway. Okay. But the whole thing is, it's just like, even though, you know, us as women go through things growing up, it's like, As I can say, it's, it's, it's good to have somebody to talk to, somebody to, you know, because everybody ain't got that person you so can I'm, just So I'm, I'm trying on. to let you, like, express it in your own words, mm -hmm. but you're not. Mm -hmm. So just tell us what happened. Well... <laughs> For young girls, pretty much. Tell us what happened to you. I pretty much got in this man's car and because me and my child's father got into an argument, he bought me some alcohol and stuff like that, you know. And, you know, we was all good. Everything was all, this is because I ran away from home. I wasn't really reaching out to professional help. I was trying to deal with things myself. So I got in his car. He pretty much was armed, this and that. He I didn't really, I just kept it to myself, honestly. You told your baby daddy? No. Did you ever, really have you ever told your husband? Dad. I told my husband, I told didn't tell my husband? baby dad. No? Cause it happened when I was with my baby right. dad. Right. Honestly. And so he like penetrated you and everything? He basically took it from you? And this happened when you was 15, so you was already living with your baby daddy at this point. Mm -hmm. Now, I get it, you guys got into an argument, but you know, we keep it a buck on this channel, right? So was it a situation where you was, you know, looking to get a little bit of money and trade it for sex type deal, but then no. he ended up taking it? Okay, so you was just literally just had got into an argument, was I guess walking outside, and he being pulled up. Not, being naive and stupid. Yeah, yeah. You listen. I'm, I'm happy that you chose to tell the story because there's going to be some 14 to 15 year old girl that's going to hear this and she's going to think twice about getting into this strange guy's car. How did it make you feel when he took it from you like that? I feel worthless. I feel like nothing. I feel... To this day, I still feel like nothing. It's like, sometimes I wonder, it's like, it's just like, I guess trying to fit in too much, it ain't always, it ain't always what you think it is. Because even though, you know, my motive, you know, was just to, like, get a ride, you know, and just 
hang out, clear my mind, stuff like that. But his motive was different, you know? So it's like... Guys are motivated to have sex. And, you know, young girls don't oftentimes understand how deeply internal that motivation is. It's literally wired into our DNA. And so if you don't have an opportunity to learn that and hear that from older guys, then you're susceptible when you're that age. And yeah, so, so I ain't gonna lie, today I feel like a victim of one of the Atlanta females that got caught up in it, you know. I'm sorry that that happened to you. I'm sorry that that happened to you. But the good thing is, it's like, I have healed myself from that, you know, I pray about it. No, you haven't. You, you have, it just took you 20 minutes to get it out. People who are, who have healed from that, when I ask that question, they spit it right out. They tell what happened. They may show emotion and everything like that, but mm -hmm. it's not something that, like that stare off that you just had, you did that for bait, almost 20 minutes. Took me 20 minutes to get this out of you. So I'm gonna go ahead and go on a limb and say you're not healed from it. And it may be something that you want to continue to talk about when you do get back into therapy. Uh, because you know, it may have an effect on you that you don't like. Okay, and so I'm gonna encourage you to do that. Listen, we really appreciate you, okay? Okay. And we definitely wish you nothing but the best out here, alright? Okay. Make sure oh, you have I'm gonna a good do one, better. Sweetie. Trust me, I'm gonna we do know better. You I'm will. not gonna let that hold me down. <laughs> Make sure you have a good one, sweetie. Okay.